Hello, everybody, and welcome to Wednesday, January 6th, 2021. First time I'm saying that on a video there. Happy New Year, indeed. Um, here's what we're doing for today. Hopefully, you watched yesterday's video and you've seen some extracted DNA. Um, I'm real bummed out that you couldn't be here live to experience that. Or maybe you were, maybe you just now got or not here. Um, but we're going to dig deeper into what actually goes into making up that DNA today. Um, so we'll go through, you'll answer your bell ringer for today. Um, get back into that habit of answering those daily. We've got notes that we're going to take. I'll show you how you can access those notes from being there where you are. We'll cover just the basics of DNA and kind of look at what we got going on with that. And then we've got some questions on Schoology that you are going to answer up for uh, tomorrow. So first off, let's head over to Schoology here. Um, I'll go all the way back because it's been a while since we've done this. Uh, when you open it up, you should just see January. Obviously, I've got all the other things there, but it's hidden. We'll go to this week of the 4th through the 8th. We'll go right to Wednesday. Open up the Wednesday folder there. There's our bell ringer right there, so you can answer it. Um, going on with it. You've got your slide note, so you can pull that up or pause this video as we go through things. Either way is fine. Um, then you got a blank copy of the notes, so if you're at home, you can load this up and print this off, and this can be your notes um, for it, or if you just want to write it on paper, um, we kind of have it laid out in this fashion where we'll have bullet points going for everything going on. we got the questions dealing with it there. Um, or if you want to make your own copy of this, you can just type in the document itself, and that can be your notes for today if you would rather do that. Um, basically, whatever your option is. We're just going to cover number one, though, describing the general structure of DNA. So, without further ado, let's go through those notes. Your DNA and RNA. Number one, describe the general structure of DNA. The name and the shape of it. I'm going to change where my face is at so that we can get the whole thing kind of happening here. Let me transition. Hey, there we go. Boom, right above me is that DNA. DNA stands for, first off, deoxyribonucleic acid. Yeah, that's a lot there. That's usually why we just call it DNA. But it's deoxyribonucleic acid. And we're going to look at why that is here over the course of the next couple of days. First off, um, the, the shape of it is this fancy double helix formation going on there. Uh, sometimes it's called the twisted ladder because it kind of looks like a ladder, but you just twist it uh, on the little rungs, which is the side of the ladder. Some people call it a spiral staircase, like one of those fancy ones that you see in like, you know, a castle or something that kind of goes all the way up. Um, there's lots of different nicknames that they have. The official scientific one, though, is the double helix. So that's usually what we um, go with with that one. Now we have three scientists that helped discover, and I realize that my face is covering up one of their names, so let me change positions there. Boom, there we go. We've got over on the left side, Rosalind Franklin. Her main contribution um, was that it gave the other two scientists the idea of how the 3D shape actually looks. She was a, an x-ray technician, and she took x-ray pictures of DNA and came up with this little picture that's on the side here. Let me turn on my little pointer thing so you can see the red going there. She came up with this um, picture of DNA, which in the x-ray she had, she was like top down, so this is bird's eye view, and it came out with this kind of x-shaped pattern. That information led Mr. James Watson and Mr. Francis Crick to create, to give them the idea that DNA was structured as this double helix, where there was a back and forth of this twistedness with the bases in the middle. And our video today that you're going to watch um, is more specific for um, looking at how they took her contribution of it. But all three of these scientists are specifically linked to um, the discovery of the formation of DNA. Usually it's Watson and Crick that get the main thing because they won the first Nobel Prize for it, but it was actually Rosalind Franklin who inspired them to come up with the idea. And if it wasn't for her untimely death, she would have gotten credit for it, but she died before they um, basically published or got recognized for their major discovery there. So here's the video that you'll watch with Rosalind Franklin. I cannot 
play it for you, but there's the link is in the video. I'll also post the link directly on the in the Schoology folder as well. Um, but it kind of goes through all three of those scientists and this discovery of the shape of DNA. I said we're not going to be able to watch it there, um, but it is another one of our. Um, Boop, bop, beep, bop, bop, bop. What, what are those things called? The uh, Ted Eds, the ones that we always do. That's what it's called. So what actually makes up DNA? DNA is made out of what we call a nucleotide, which is where the nucleic acid part of the name comes from, is because this is what makes it a nucleic acid. It is made out of these nucleotides. Nucleotides are coming or are made up of three different parts. The first part is what is known as a sugar. The things that we talked about earlier on in the year is one of the major molecules. DNA is made up of one of those major molecules being a sugar. The type of sugar that it is is called a deoxyribose sugar. Hence, where the term deoxyribo comes from in the DNA part of deoxyribonucleic acid is because it references the type of sugar that gets used in it because it's a very specific type. It's only found in DNA. Um, in there, we have what is called a phosphate group that is up here. That is going to be basically the connector point between the sugars. Uh, it goes a sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, sugar, phosphate, all the way up the sides of the ladder. And that basically is what makes DNA become the, the long string that it is in there. And then finally, we have what is known as a nitrogen base. Which these are probably the, the this is the, uh, essentially the code for your DNA that has all your traits and everything is how these nitrogen bases are lined up um, and how many there are, what order they become in. And it's what we're going to focus on the most as far as the DNA is because this is where all the information is stored inside those nitrogen bases and the order of those nitrogen bases that are in there. Um, and there's four kinds of them in DNA. So we're going to look at those four kinds here. Uh, so the four nitrogen bases, we have adenine, which is usually we symbolize as an A, and we have thymine, which is symbolized as a T. Those two things, let me shrink my face here a little bit so that you can really see the T there. There we go. These two always connect up to each other. A and T go together. Think A, T, and T. You know the, I don't know if that's even a foam company any, anymore, but those two things used to go together pretty well. Um, A's and T's go together. Uh, a real common thing to help you remember is that the apples go in the tree. So A with T. Apples are in the tree. I forget, it's a mnemonic device or something like that. Kind of our, a little metaphor that we relate one thing to another one way that you can remember A goes with T. Apples are in the tree. It makes sense that the apples are in the tree. Uh, the second pairing that goes on, because I mentioned there's only four, so they get paired up, is that what we call cytosine pairs up with guanine. Usually we reference those as C's and G's. So in this case, the cars get parked in the garage. So the apples are in the tree, the cars are in the garage. Is how you know I like to remember those things. That's kind of the standby kind of analogy to go with the mnemonic device that goes with apples in the tree, cars in the garage. And it is important that these two things go together because they just fit together. Um, if we think about them as puzzle pieces, they're the two puzzle pieces that link together. If you have an A with a C, for example, the puzzle pieces don't fit. It causes what we call a mutation in DNA if that happens. If an A pairs with a G, same thing. It's not going to lock together. And because it's not going to lock together, it is not going to create the type of DNA that we want. It's going to have a mutation in there. It's not going to be correct because it's not matching with its pair. They have to be with their pair. Scientifically speaking, um, it is because there is, for A's and T's, there's only two points where they connect up. For C's and G's, there's three connection points where they have to meet up. So literally, they have like a little lock and key system to where it has to make sure that every lock has an appropriate key to it and that everything matches up when they actually connect or what we call bond together inside of the DNA there. You can kind of see that represented a little bit with our picture here. You can see that G's and C's have three dots in between them, whereas A and T has two. That's how many connections have to be made there. 
So if those numbers don't match up, they know that there is something wrong with it. Um, and that's all we got for today. So that is our notes going through today. So hopefully you're able to pause, stop, kind of take a look at what you got going on there. Your assignment then goes along with our notes today. It is back in Schoology, as I already have up there. It is called the Assignment DNA Questions. Let me just load this up so you can kind of see what's happening with it. I need the preview of it. Um, you get three attempts on it, just like we've done with all of our homework assignments. You hit start new attempt on it. There's 10 questions for today, and they're all based off of what we looked at for um, DNA here. So we've got some just general knowledge facts going on here. We've got name the part going on there. So you just click and drop where you think those things go. Got some more just standard kind of multiple choice type of questions. And then the, uh, I guess that's just one set of questions there. We got one set of questions where I give you this little article to read because kind of, I thought it was kind of cool. Um, where they did this study on twins last year where one of the twins was sent out into outer space, one of them stayed here on Earth, and they monitored how much of their DNA changed based off of being on Earth versus being in space for about a year. Um, one of the astronauts went to the International Space Station while his brother was at home. He wasn't an astronaut, um, but they monitored him. Um, and they just looked to see basically how being in outer space, how did their DNA change? But some of the things that they found was kind of crazy uh, about it, which you got a couple of questions there to then answer at the end. Uh, and then you got this one here. This is a special one I wanted to make mention of. We mentioned that the bases pair up with each other. So I give you this string of DNA, or what we call a sequence in DNA, where it has T, A, C, G, G, A, T, A. These represents your thymines, adenines, cytosines, guanines. What you need to do for this particular question is find out what would be the other side. What would be their matching side to it? So the first thing you would look at is what matches up with a T, what matches up with an A, what matches up with a C, and you would find what section would fit best. And as it says in the directions, the first base starts on the left, so you read it from left to right on that one. Um, and then when you're done, you submit it up. Whatever you got, you can always go and review your answers. I believe I have that turned on to check yourself afterwards. And you can take it again if you want a better score. This is to make sure that you start off the best way possible for um, the year there. So with that being said, I'm going to put back up the Wednesday and do our sign-offs here. I hope I see you back in class real soon because it's kind of a bummer that you didn't get to be here for our first kind of couple days back in action. But... You know, safety is safety, so I hope you're doing well out there. Stay safe. Stay warm, because it's definitely warm in here. And I will see you later.